Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Hey, we've got another fun Fender Friday from Japan. So I've kind of taken a break from the Fender Japans, mainly because, you know, there hasn't been much out there. And at the beginning of last year, I lost my connection in Japan. So getting these has become a little bit more difficult. But I am happy to announce, hey, I've got a new connection in Japan. So <laughs> even ones that are not supposed to leave the country, we can now get them on my channel. And that's what we're going to learn about today. There's Japan exclusive guitars, and then there's Japan exclusive exclusive guitars. And this is one of those that is not meant to leave the country. But a little bit more on that in a minute. Let's go ahead and take this thing out and see exactly what it is that we're dealing with today. Oh, it appears to be some sort of a Telecaster. With our beautiful headstock. Oh wait, no, it's a P-Bass with a weird thing. Oh wait, it's a Stratocaster. <laughs> this is known as the Fender 51. So let's do a little bit of history on this weird, bizarre model that I am instantly falling in love with having this in person. So this guitar is based off of this one. It's called the Squire 51. Generally speaking, Squires are cheaper versions of Fender guitars, but this is one of their few original designs that they produced under their branding. They were initially pretty cheap guitars, running about $150 new, and there's various sales throughout the years, whereas you could get them for like 100 bucks, sometimes even as cheap as $70. But they ran from 2003 to 2006. They had a few different colors that you could choose from, but what made them unique is the fact that they blunt tele casters for their neck, stratocasters for their body, and then the pickguard designs kind of loosely based on like a 51p base. So after those were discontinued, they kind of became cult classics. I mean, look at today's market. They're going to run you at least double their brand new price. So in 2011, Fender under their new pawn shop series reissued them under the Fender brand name and named them the Fender 51. They looked fairly similar, but they were made in Japan. But after that version was discontinued in 2013, the same year they revived it under the Squire brand name and they look like this. However, what makes those very different is the fact that they are string through. All the other ones were top loaded systems. So it's been nearly a decade and Fender Japan finally brings these things out. But you're probably going to notice something. Huh. This actually looks a little bit more traditional as compared to what we were just looking at. The biggest thing that this new Made in Japan limited edition run did is we no longer have that weird single coil humbucker setup. They went a little bit more traditional telly on here because we've got the Telecaster style headstock and neck. Now we've got the telly pickups. We still have that really big pick guard design here. But the only thing Stratocaster about this is the body. So if you love strats, but you've always wanted a Telecaster, this is the perfect run to get into. I mean, we even got the comfort cuts back here, but we've got that nice see-through black blonde finish on here so this really has a lot of telly vibes to it so it's very interesting in that aspect but now we need to learn about exclusive exclusive fender guitars on fender japan's website there is a section of guitars that they only sell within their country that you can buy from that website or you can pick them up at fender japan's store within the mikigaki america mira shop but looking at these photos it kind of reminds me of like what the gibson garage is but they've just set up shop in this big music mega store i'm not 100 sure on that but neither of these shops will ship to you internationally as far as i understand so it's not like the Silent Siren series of guitars or the Haruna Telly, the Gino Jazz Bass or any of the other ones that I've covered on my channel where all the dealers within Japan have access to them. And if you're lucky, you can find one that will ship to you. This is a case of when exclusive to Japan typically means exclusive to Japan. But thankfully, I just got a new friend in Japan who will help me obtain these guitars. So big thank you to him for helping us get back to these guitars because they do a lot of fun, freaky stuff in rapid fire, small runs like these things only stay online for a few weeks or maybe a couple of months if you're lucky depending on how popular the model is. So it kind of reminds me of the Gibson demo shop in that aspect. However, they're, they're not just making like one or two of these. I don't have official numbers, but you know, 50 to 200, maybe 400, something like that. Like for example, this one is no longer available. <laughs> I just bought it not that long ago. So I'm glad I was able to get it when I did. And generally they're not too expensive. The 51 we're looking at today, it's 132,000 yen. So roughly 1300 USD plus all shipping costs, import duties and taxes because it is 
is a made in Japan instrument, you'll have to pay about five to 10% on that. And the fact that you'll have to buy this within Japan means you're gonna have to pay their consumption tax as well. So you're getting double, triple taxed on this thing. So they get kind of expensive to bring to America. So what else is currently available at the time of recording this? You guys remember the Supersonic review? I still got a couple of those if you'd like to purchase them, but they have an exclusive tobacco finished one. I thought that looked pretty sweet. There's a couple of roasted maple neck Stratocasters and Telecasters. And then inspired by the Fender Lead series, they have a neon yellow and neon green player strats. Those are pretty striking. But one that I had so many requests to get under forwarding slash new guitar day purchases was Kunifi Humbucker Jazz Masters. Unfortunately, those things are gone. They're actually pretty cool. People liked them because they were the legitimate humbucker copper nickel iron pickups. So if I've turned you down in the past for these super limited edition ones, feel free to check again if something comes up because generally I didn't pay too much attention to these because I could never get them, but now things are a little bit different. All right, now that we know the nitty gritty about this exclusive Fender Japan website guitar, what are my first impressions of this? I'm, I'm really happy with it. Like I wasn't quite too sure if I was gonna like this, but now that I know a little bit more about the Fender 51, I actually really like this version because it's more so Tele-like and I really like Telecasters. But I'm just now realizing this. <laughs> no wonder I like it. I like Stratocaster bodies, right? But I'm not a big fan of trem systems. I just don't use them, so I don't like to have to mess with them. This has the Tele setup here, so it's now a string through Stratocaster, so it's a hardtail strat but with a more interesting profile here so hey that actually works nice it's definitely a c-shaped neck here it's a little bit chunky but not over the top like it feels almost more u-shaped right here in your chord area but then it slowly flattens out and who doesn't love the butterscotch blonde finish i almost think uh, a really dark tortoise shell pick guard on this would look pretty good too but to learn more about this fantastic made in Japan beast, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Fender 51, let's learn a little bit about it. So this pick guard is not connected to any of the pickups or anything. It's just screwed into the top. It kind of helps you hide that three piece basswood body. If I had any complaint about this guitar, it would just be that, you know, it's three pieces. It looks kind of parts caster-esque, like somebody just made this. Because that's a pretty big chunk right there, and then right there, and right here. But anyways, here's what the strange pickguard looks like. It's just a, a blending between kind of like Stratocaster, a little bit of Telecaster. It's interesting. In order to adjust the truss rod on this one, you do have to take that pickguard off but they have that nice channel there to make that super easy. But as far as our neck pickup, it reads two in there for some reason. And they just call these vintage style single coil tele pickups for both the neck and the bridge positions. So we'll just take a quick look at those guys. I'm sure the way they wind these has something to do with the special tone that you get. And here's what the backside of that neck pickup looks like. As far as the bridge cavity route, nothing too fancy right there. These four screw holes are for where the bridge plate gets secured. You can see them right there. And we've got the vintage three brass saddles, and it is a string through Tele style bridge. No top load option, unlike the original 51s. Next up, let's get our pickup readings. But when I threw this on the workbench and I went to feel these knobs, I was like, okay, master volume, master tone, wait a minute. Where's our toggle switch on this thing? <laughs> okay, so this does not actually have a tone at all. You have three selections on this. And here's how that thing works. So full clockwise is the neck pickup, which is honestly the exact opposite way I would want it to be. Like, wouldn't you guys normally think, okay, all the way on should be bridge. It's like flicking it down. Whereas all the way up should be flicking it up to the neck. No, it's the opposite of that. So all the way turned counterclockwise is the bridge pickup, whereas all the way clockwise is your neck, and then obviously your in-between is your in-between for that. So within the circuit, the bridge is 6.36k ohms, our neck position a little less at 5.21, and then our middle position just under 3. But yeah, that is what that looks like right there. And then just a regular CTS pot for your volume. And I guess while we're in here, here's what the basswood cavity looks like in there. And for our knobs, we have the knurled dome top chrome ones. They secure to the shaft using a screw right there. 
And unlike most Stratocasters, it's kind of telly in that style. It has a plug-in on the side for your output jack, which I've always been a big fan of side output jack strats, so that was nice. But as weird as this looks, I almost think it'd be okay without a pick guard too. I mean, maybe you'd need another pickup right here to pull it off, but yeah, it's interesting. Fastwood body has a lot of interesting wood grain on it, which is kind of what you would want on this finish. It's not quite as crazy as some ash bodies could be, but hey, at least you have a little bit of wood grain. But moving on from our three-piece body, we've got a straight-up maple neck. We've got 21 vintage frets on here with the black dot inlay. Now, full disclosure, I did polish these frets up because generally, after their trip back to America, they get some corrosion on them, so those are looking quite nice now. Spec sheets call it a 9.5 inch radius, which I agree with. 25 and a half inch scale length. And we also have a bone nut, but before we get the neck dimensions, all the way up here, kind of by the 17th fret, there is a small QC thing. You can see there's some trash or something right here by this fret. I know it kind of looks like a chip in the fretboard, but I really think it's just something underneath the lacquer, like it was a small dust particle or something. I only noticed it because I was polishing the frets. Usually Fender Japan's really good about stuff like that. But we have a skinny 1.63 inch nut width, and that increases to 2.02 .02 by the 12th. First fret neck depth 0.89, and by the 12th 0.92. Now the spec sheets did indeed call this a U-shaped neck profile. The contour gauge kind of helps us show that. So this is the first fret area. You see how much more rounded that is? But then it gets a little bit flatter right here. That's why I say it's more of like a U-shape into a C-shape neck. It's comfortable if you like bigger necks in this area for your cords, but flattens out just a tad right here to make soloing comfortable. If you like slightly bigger necks, I think you might enjoy this. As far as our headstock, Tellian style, you have a disc style string tree. The truss rod's capped off with a walnut wood and you've got some great wood grain with the old vintage style tuners with a large fender logo. But hey, now that we've got it all put back together, I just want to take a second to appreciate this pick guard. Mainly this area. It's a very strange stylization, but hey, I guess it works. And I like this area right here. Like, if you take this part out, it reminds me of a Gibson Corvus. <laughs> but anyways, let's flip this one over to the back side. Not too much going on back here. You can see it's a string through variant. And I would say the back does a better job at hiding the three-piece body than the front. Like, all this just seems to match. But you've got your Stratocaster comfort carve back here. Typical screwed-on neck. That's what your output jack looks like on the side. You've got a strap button down there, and then up here. And the neck and the fretboard are all one piece of maple, so still maple back here with your walnut skunk stripe. This is a beautiful guitar. It's got great wood grain back here. Not so much in like the figuring department, but wood grain, it's got some niceness. But there's our serial number, made in Japan, 2021, because of the first two digits. Why am I blocking the last three? It's because, I don't know, I'd hate for them to be like, oh, we're not going to sell to this guy who purchased this particular one because they're sending them to Trogley. So that's the only reason I ever block out the made in Japan serial numbers, to keep the innocent innocent. All said and done, though, just under seven pounds, six pounds, 10.2 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this strange Fender 51 Made in Japan limited run sounds. All right, let's go ahead and get into this, starting with our bridge pickup. <laughs> Sometimes telly, neck pickups can be pretty dark and muddy, but this one I really like. Now we'll do both together. Hmm. 
All right, so far really digging those tones. <laughs> some distortion. tone to roll that back a little bit but man I'm plenty happy just with that bridge pickup in this guitar I mean the neck sounds great too <laughs> occasionally but these tones are great <laughs> Now that we know all about the Japan Fender exclusive exclusive Fender 51 what are my final thoughts on this thing I had a great time I love the neck profile it's nice and beefy it fills your hand it's exactly what I was wanting to play today Second, I love the tones out of the pickups. I mean, I think the bridge steals the show, but that neck pickup is just fantastic for a Tele neck pickup. Because as I was telling you earlier, those neck pickups can occasionally be very dark sounding, but this one has a perfect blend in my opinion. Does that have something to do with how it's the Stratocaster body with this weird pick guard? Eh, who knows? Maybe they're just interesting pickups that I happen to like today. The body's really lightweight. It balances well on a strap. I like the fact that it's a full-on gloss neck and a full-on gloss fretboard. Some guys don't like that. But for me, that's just a big plus. That's the way I like them. The only thing I do not like about this guitar is the one thing that I didn't know about it going into this review. The fact that we don't have a tone and it's a three-way selector switch within that. If I was gonna keep this guitar for myself, I'd probably just put a regular Tele style switch in here and maybe just do like a stacked volume or pot or something, or maybe even install it into the body or something, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of switching systems like that. But not having any toggle switch on this definitely gives it an interesting vibe. So, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed learning about this Japan exclusive Fender 51. If you're interested in being the next owner of this particular one, I really, seriously can only get this one. So, once this one's gone, it's gone because they don't make them anymore. But you can check that out on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow with some more guitar information. Take care.